Hello and welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I'm your host, Gabe Peterson, and this is the place investors go to gain actionable advice, learn about current market trends, and hear war stories from other professional investors out there in the field today. Before we get started, I have two quick housekeeping items for you. First, if you like this episode, we would very much appreciate a like, subscribe, and share. It is the best way to support the show and keep it running far into the future. Second, if you're a new investor looking to get started in real estate or an experienced investor looking to take your investing to the next level, I've created an ebook just for you that will cover how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance those deals with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. On top of that, I throw in an insane amount of free bonuses that you'll have access to once you buy the ebook. All I charge is our admin costs to keep this show running. So if you're serious about real estate investing and want to create both active and passive income as an investor, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com and click on the button that says, get the ebook in the upper right-hand corner to grab yourself a copy. With that said, let's dive right in. Today, we have a very special guest with us ready to drop some investor knowledge on you. So buckle up, grab your pen and paper and enjoy the ride. All right, we are back with another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. Today is very special because we got Mark Stubler here with us. Mark is the founder of Joe Home Buy Franchise, a father of four, and he's a Mark. He's a Utah native. I almost, I almost said okay. Seattle because we were just talking about <laughs> Seattle, but no, he's from Utah. So I'm super excited That's to right. have Mark here. Mark, thank you very much for hopping on the show. Hey, good man, Gabe. No, appreciate it, and excited to dive in. I love Seattle. So if you would have said I was from there, I would have been okay with it. <laughs> okay. Great good. area. Yeah. Good. No offense taken though. That's great. <laughs> Mark, I told you before we hopped on the show, um, we lo love hearing people's stories, how they got into real estate. And so I'm sure you got a good one starting up Joe, Joe Homebuyer. So why don't you jump into it? How'd you get started in real estate? Well, brother, I uh, was like most of us. My first stab or attempted at, uh, real estate did not go overly, uh, it wasn't overly productive. I, uh, it always I seems to be to the case, right? Right. And, but yet we stick with it. We love it. <laughs> I mean, there's just, so, I, I, I have to tell you, I feel so fortunate to have found real estate that it just affords so much opportunity, but dude, my first uh, go at it, uh, resulted in a property we couldn't sell. Cause it was now <sighs> we were leveraged in it more than it was worth. We had to convert it into a rental and try to just, uh, you know, not lose money on it. And luckily the market appreciated enough. Yeah. Uh, and we were able to uh, keep a renter in there and eventually sell it a couple of years later and, and make a couple of thousand or a few thousand dollars. But that was my <laughs> first attempt at it. Hey, uh, at least you're yeah. in the black. That is uh, that's that's a saving grace right there. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I lived to tell the tale. But my actual true experience in real estate happened about five years after that. I had a rental by then. I, I uh, lived to tell the tale with that first uh, attempt. But I've just been, I had a lot of experience in sales. In fact, my story starts with fencing and decking. I sold vinyl fencing and decking and the company I was with did a fantastic job. They were a great uh, company, but I just got to the point where um, I needed to um, become an entrepreneur. They took me from an outside sales rep and said, hey, oh, by the way, you need to run one of the inside sales shifts. Uh, and that included being behind the counter selling these $10 parts to customers. And I realized, wait a minute, I don't work for myself. I'm not autonomous. I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm having to report as a pencil sharpener behind this desk and take us inside sell shift. And it changed. It was a paradigm shift for me. And it compelled me to uh, become an entrepreneur. And luckily, I found uh, real estate. That's awesome, man. So, you know, people, when they when they get into any new endeavor, it's and, you know, they get a taste of what what it's like. Um, it is, I've always found that it is super important to have a first win. You did not have that first win. And so how did you, you know, after you, you did that flip and you saw that you guys spent more on, you know, probably on the rehab, <laughs> right. how did you get the motivation to get back into it? Well, luckily I had a trusted friend. Uh, for those of you that are uh, your listeners that uh, follow different podcasts and different influencers, Cody Hoffine uh, is a friend and business partner of mine. And uh <clears throat> Really, we had sold fencing and decking together. That's the funny thing. We, we uh, met that way. We stayed in touch. He's got into wholesaling and doing real estate investment before I did. 
And then I stayed in touch with him and said, Hey, what are you doing? I'm, I'm on the path out. Uh, what do you suggest I do? And he says, you know, you ought to tr try this. You ought to check this out. So I got going on it. And a few months later we decided, Hey, let's just partner up and get this done. So, uh, but I, so I, I didn't have such a bad experience that it scared me off. Um, I did have to put myself in a position to have some cash. I sold my boat, put renters in my basement, uh, put a little money in savings because I was in a position that I, I was used to making a paycheck yep. and I was paid pretty well. But uh, yeah, I, it, it took um, some sacrifice and, and definitely had some uh, risk, but uh, it worked out and I feel fortunate. Again, but real estate's just that way. I mean, the fact that you can turn profits as quickly as you can, just a unique vehicle for making money. Yep. But yeah, I mean, even so, like having to take that leap, I know for me, um, taking the leap out of a, a pay a job where I got the W-2 paycheck every every two weeks and then into right. something, you know, that I, there was no guarantee. That leap itself is just terrifying. No, I don't, whatever way you look at it, it's always scary. Um, but when you do it, anybody that does it, especially in real estate, it seems like, uh, you know, we all have good stories once we get through that initial fear. So that's right. Um, and you had you had mentors, uh, it sounds like, which is one of the things that got you through the kind of the lull there. It's a big difference. Yep. And that is so crucial. If anybody out there, you know, you're in real estate, you're just getting started um, and, you know, you're trying to figure out how to go forward. I highly recommend just looking for a mentor, any mentor, anybody in the game right now. Um, it's the easiest way to go forward. So, Mark, you you did that. You found your your partner. Uh, what happened after that? How did you get to the point where you actually I mean, you said it says franchise in the title. I've, I've never heard of a home buying business being franchised. So that's I'm really interested in that kind of like model. Well, I'm excited to share it with you. Yeah, so we knocked it, or I guess uh, started in 2016, knocked it out of the park, had a lot of success. And we realized, hey, we're in a competitive Utah landscape. And if we're having the success, you know, what's the best way to, uh, you know, increase our outreach across the country? And what I really like about the franchise model is you have strategic partners. You're invested in their efforts. And if they win and they win big, then you share in that opportunity. And so you're creating these, pseudo partners all across the country. And so we started Joe Home Buyer Franchise in 2019. We're now a couple of years old and we've had some really successful franchisees all across the country. And it's been um, an interesting challenge and just incredible opportunity to take our system and help people employ it into their lives, their businesses, their markets, and to get you know similar results or better results and ultimately employ everything that we've done and they can be us in their marketplace. So it's been just an incredible journey. It's this out of the box system where they can just leverage the years and time and money that we've spent. They don't have to go through the same brain damage that we did. They can learn from us. <laughs> and I can say from experience, learning, learning from the streets, you know, there's value in it, but damn, it hurts. You, it's, it's much nicer to learn from a, a system that already and it can works. be slow, right? It can yep. take unnecessary time. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, I mean, so you're working with other franchisees across the country. So I'm sure you see every single market out there. Is there any market that you're seeing in the U.S. right now that you're mo more excited about than others? We have a franchisee group that has a couple of territories. They own one in Tampa and Atlanta. They're crushing it. And the interesting thing is, is they uh, are in pretty competitive markets, but we really like Tampa and Atlanta. Lots of the Florida markets are doing well. We're in Dallas as a owner, as a corporate owned uh, location, as well as we have a handful of others in Texas, and they're doing uh, some pretty exciting things in, in Texas. But, you know, again, I'm, I'm just excited in general. We have a, a couple franchisees in Phoenix, which is one of the most competitive marketplaces out there. You have some really big uh, players down there, and yet our franchisees are getting results down there. So I would argue that it's more of, about how you're doing business and the systems that you have in place, the marketing strategies that you're utilizing, your exit strategies, and how you're maximizing revenue. That That is almost sure the market has a factor. I mean, let's, I, I'm not trying to be naive yeah. to that, but at the end of the day, some of those other things are going to be an indicator of your success more than the market you're in. Yep. You can make real estate work in any market. Oh, Amen. There's probably some markets out there that are, it's not going to work in, but just about every majority. market. <laughs> yep, absolutely. That's right. So um, do you guys only do single family or, or do you guys do commercial? What, what is your, uh, is it mostly towards single family flips? Uh, it is, but the natural byproduct of our marketing strategies yield us opportunities for small multifamily um, and even occasionally commercial and, and some land projects. But uh, the vast majority and the target for marketing is based around small multifamily and single family. Yep, that makes sense. So 
So as you work with a bunch of um, you know business owners who are starting from the ground up, so you see all the mistakes people make. What are some of the the most common mistakes people make when they're you know just getting started in in a flipping business in a wholesaling business? Well, one of the the observations that I've seen uh, Gabe over and over is uh, people's fear of of like committing to their business, hmm. meaning yep. that in our space you've got to be committed to you know several functions, and one of those is investing into it. Uh, so you've got to spend money on marketing. You've got to stay consistent at managing those leads and those opportunities. Um, but again, I get it. It's like, if, if I told you, hey, I'm going to sell you a Subway franchise and I'm going to ship you out all these boxes of meat and, and bread and, and I, you know, I'm going to send you this table that has a Subway logo on it. People get excited because they see their money actually go to something. In our space, I'm saying you have to invest in web and direct mail and you don't get anything for it. You don't get a box of t-shirts that says that you own a business. You just get, you get one letter that comes to your house. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's what you get. And so it becomes a uh, pretty, uh, you know, a, a nervous process for people. And when they fall short to market, they fall, fall short on their, um, their lead flow. And then they, you know, you start to lose confidence and it can be a challenge. And it's just the perpetual journey of an entrepreneur and specifically our, our industry. You have to be creating the leads and that comes in lots of forms of marketing but that's one of the common pitfalls I've, I've observed for sure. Yep. Yeah. I remember when I was, uh, when I was first getting started and I, I was doing my first, um, yellow letter mailer and yeah. I, you know, I, I did all this stuff and I, I got my letter that the one that I wanted, and then it was time to like pay for it. And I looked at the bill and I think it was like 1500 <laughs> bucks. And I was like, yep. Oh my God, yep. how am I ever yep. going to make yep. that money back? That's right. But you got to do it. You got to pull the trigger. Um, and especially for letters. I mean, I, I, when I was in single family, um, I'm doing commercial now, we didn't really talk much before the show, but, um, when I was in single family, I, you know, direct mail was one of the most effective marketing methods that I found. Um, is that the same thing that you're seeing today is, is direct mail or are there other marketing channels that you feel are, you know, more effective? Yeah, so we do a, a heavy approach on web, which includes SEO, PPC, Facebook, retargeting, uh, all things influence on web. And then uh, direct mail is a big part. And then our, our, our third uh, major marketing channel is prospecting. So outbound calling, you know, that type of thing. But um, all of them uh, work. I wholeheartedly believe that. Uh, and each market uh, has a little bit different results as to which one is the leader yeah, in that specific market. But we're really big within our uh, franchise system to really encourage the franchisees to be diversified uh, yep. so that they have multiple channels uh, delivering results for them. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. And uh, man, I, I remember when I first tried um, PPC that you can easily dump some dollars into PPC if you don't know what you're doing. I'll tell you what. Oh my heck. Yeah. So you have to be careful with any of it. You're right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, um, where are you guys at now? Like how many franchisees do you have out there? How many, uh, do you guys do your own flips in your own business too, or how, how does it work? Yeah. Great question. So we encourage our franchisees to have three major exit strategies. And right now we have 44 territories across the country. Uh, Joe home buyers out there, uh, making waves. We hope to become the household name for home buying, uh, Joe home buyer franchise. So hopefully you'll see us and hear of us a little bit more, but, uh, uh, yeah, we encourage our franchisees to do three major exit strategies. Keep them as rentals. Obviously, we want our uh, franchisees to become wealthy over time, to have passive income, to have, you know, increasing their net worth. Uh, also, flip, fix and flips and wholesaling. And there's a life cycle. You're not going to start, uh, you know, uh, attempting to keep everything as a rental right out the gate because you have to have cash flow coming. You have to have revenue and, um, you know, dollars to spend. So, uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, we understand the value of each of the major exit strategies. And then even within passive income, Airbnbs and different types of rentals and lease options. And I mean, there's a lot of ways to make money, as you know, uh, in those strategies. Uh, so each one of them gets a little bit deeper, but uh, those are the, the main concepts. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And if you're just getting into real estate there, I think there's an unwritten rule somewhere. It's a law of real estate is your first wholesale is going to be $5,000. That's just what everybody gets. They always make $5,000 on their first wholesale. It. And it's going to, it's going to cause you more, you're going to get gray hair from it as well. That first one, if you can live to tell the tale, uh, it's, it can be an incredibly rewarding business, but you're right. It's $5,000 and more heartache than you can draw up on a, uh, <laughs> than you could predict. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, uh, 
we're running into the to the end of the episode here. I do want to ask, you know, what advice do you have for, you know, just one piece of advice that you would give for somebody who wants to get started, um, you know, down the path for creating their own home flipping wholesaling business? Well, I'm probably going to sound like an uh, open or a broken record for somebody that's heard me on an, <laughs> another podcast. But I have to tell you, I think it's personal development. And yep. you're like, well, hold on, that has nothing to do with real estate. But I'm a big advocate of, uh, you know, what Jim Rohn teaches and uh, John Maxwell of this, you know, you get what you put in, you get what you, um, what you're becoming. And uh, it's this idea that, and again, your listeners are doing that. They're becoming students. They're students of, uh, of what you're sharing with them and the, you know, those that you're hosting. Um, I, I would just tell you, but it's that development as a leader, because you start to think about a leader, think about business as a leader, think about opportunities as a leader. Um, I don't care what industry you're in. I do think you're choosing a great industry in selecting real estate, uh, but I think it starts with that and, and ends with that. So I continually am working on personal development, developing as a leader, and I think it's the catalyst to really a successful mind and working and operating uh, using the right behaviors that are going to help drive results in any business. Yep, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I've always thought that, um, you know, mindset, it was almost a cop out. It was just like woo woo, but it's absolutely true. It's, it, it's amazing once you get, you know, once your mind expands a little bit past the level where you're at, it the things that used to be hard are no longer hard. It's just it's just something that you do. Um, and so mindset right. is so important. And it's, you know, it's not often talked about. Well, actually, it is often talked about, but can't be talked about enough because it is an extremely, extremely important thing for any op- entrepreneur to uh, get their hands around. Love it. All right. So we ran up against the 15 minute mark. So we're going to have to jump into the quick question round. Are you ready? Let's do it. Love it. All right. Starts out with books or just any form of education. Give me two for or two book recommendations, one for general life wisdom and one for real estate specific. General life wisdom, Ryan Holiday, Obstacle is the Way. Good uh, one. And for um, uh, business and leadership, it's John Maxwell, 21 in Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. I've read both of those, both great books. I really liked Ryan Holiday's book. That one was that one was good, killer. man. It's good. All right, moving on. Um, this one is habits. Habits form the foundation of our life. So if you could point to one thing that you do day in and day out that you feel contributes the most to your overall health, well-being, and happiness, what would that be? Uh, 10 minutes of gratitude every morning. Uh, gratitude walk in the form of prayer, in the form of journaling. I'm telling you, if I get my mind right with what's going well, it sets the tone. So it's uh, 10 minutes of gratitude every day. Gratitude. I love it. All right. Next one is a little chance for you to brag because we all have Superman strengths. We all are blessed with skills that we alone can give to the world. So what is one thing that you feel you are exceptional at? Well, I just care a lot. Um, I care a lot about our franchisees. I care a lot about their success and uh, I work hard. Uh, So caring a lot translates to uh, I put in the time uh, I, I've experienced quite a bit of success in real estate, but it's because I just, I'm willing to put in the time. Nothing's come, you know, overly easy, but I, I'm willing to put in the time because I care a lot and I work hard. Perfect, man. I love it. All right, moving on. This one is for your younger self. So if you could go back to the Mark who had no experience in real estate, he was, he was yeah. still, um, you know, working on decks, go back to him, look him in the eye, give him one piece of advice moving forward. Don't be in a hurry. All of it's part of the process. That is great advice. I wish I could tell my younger self that too. I was, I was just so like moving so fast. It's just like, bro, just chill. You're good. Just You're good. chill. That's right. <laughs> All right. This is the second to last question. And this one is about the US. There are actually, I think I've already asked this, but we're going to ask it again anyways. Sure. Um, there's a lot of square miles out there. So it means there's a lot of places to invest. What is the area that you are most excited in investing today? The area that you're committed to success. It doesn't matter. Boom. I almost don't care what market. It's whatever area you're committed to succeeding and working hard. Boom. And that's why your back door is always the best. In my opinion, it's the best place to start because you're already there. You know the area. So it you is. might as well start where you know. Guys, that's gold. Gabe, you nailed it. <laughs> All right. And that leads us to the last question, which is you have given us a lot of good advice. I'm sure people want to reach out. What is the best way for people to reach out and get in contact with you? So my name is Mark Stubler. Thank you, Gabe. You can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook. And also, I would uh, love to connect with you. If you're interested in what you have uh, heard about Joe Homebuyer, uh, the franchise, you can find us at joehomebuyerfranchising.com. That's joehomebuyerfranchising.com. Uh, and be happy to explore what the franchise opportunity is. And, and if uh, an out-of-the-box real estate system sounds attractive to you and have a partner that wants to run with you, 
that's uh, what we do at Joe. Perfect. That is joehomebuyerfranchisee.com. I'll put that URL in the show notes. So if y'all want to get in there, go ahead and click a little more in the description. It'll pull down the full description in there. You can find the link. So that's that concludes it, Mark. Thank you very much for hopping on the show. Gabe, thanks so much, my man. Absolutely. And for everybody who's here with us today, thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason we do this. So if you have any questions whatsoever, reach out to me, Gabe at therealestateinvestingclub.com. Other than that, hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode as much as I enjoyed putting it on and were able to pull some actionable advice that you can apply in your own investing today in the field. Before you go, we have a gift for you. If you're a new investor looking to get started or an established investor looking to invest, take your investing to the next level. I've created an ebook just for you available on our website. This ebook, ebook will cover how I was able to create both active and passive income in real estate with very little money to start with. In it, I will address the three most often cited obstacles new and veteran investors run into by showing you how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance a deal with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. And if you get the ebook today, I am throwing in a bundle of bonuses, seven of them to be exact. The first one will be the off-market lead generation blueprint, which will take you through the exact systems and processes we use to generate off-market leads like like clockwork, which is the most important skill when it comes to creating wealth in real estate. The second bonus is the A to Z REI systems and vendors guide, which will allow you to peek under the hood of our business and see the exact tools, systems, and even the vendors we use to see the success that we do. And the third bonus is the top 100 best performing keywords pack, which is which will give you the exact keywords we use to target motivated sellers online using PPC ads. The fourth bundle is, or the first fourth bonus is our contracts bundle for wholesaling and renting real estate, which will give you access to all the contracts we use in the field to execute all different types of transactions. After that is the investor's quick analysis calculator and offer tool, which will allow you to quickly calculate whether a deal is an actual deal and will allow you to create an offer automatically with, from those calculations. This is a lot of uh, a lot of bonuses that I said. I'm just going to keep going down the list. Number six is the investor's daily success tracker, which is a tracker you can use to ensure you are taking the right actions day in and day out to reach your financial goals in real estate. And the last bonus is the wholesalers template for quick assignment cash, which will give you the templates we use to present our wholesale deals professionally and efficiently to our buyers. Whew, that is a bundle. So it's a mouthful. You get all of those bonuses for free when you download the ebook. All we charge is the admin cost to run the show. So if you're interested in the ebook and the bonus bundle, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com. Click on get the ebook bundle at the top of the page to take advantage of that deal. And with that said, I hope you have a fantastic day and even better week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.